Welcome to Infinite Impact, a Get a Real Estate Life podcast, hosted by Jenny Williams and Zach Kennedy. So I'm super excited to be here with you today. We have been talking about this forever, and uh, now we're actually going to do it. That's right. <laughs> we're calling it Infinite Impact, a Get a Real Estate Life podcast. Are we going for it? Yeah, absolutely. Or we may call it something else. Who knows? <laughs> well, it's like me to change something constantly, not you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, hey, everybody, welcome. I'm Zach Kennedy, and I'm with the famous Jenny Williams, creator and founder of Get a Real Estate Life. It's awesome to be here with you. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's my pleasure. So thanks for joining us today. We're excited. We're going to be talking some real estate trash uh, and, you know, having that um, infinite impact um, kind of like alluded to a little bit of our topic today about mm-hmm. like what's in my nature. And uh, that's, you know, all of these personality profiles. Yeah. Like everybody loves to take a a profile and, you know, find out more about themselves and their own personalities. But um, like my friend Tracy says, we kind of all know who we are. True, true. But you don't know which Star Wars character you are. You you have to know that. And you should give some unnamed (laughs) app your your information and your credit card information. You should do that. (laughs) Absolutely. Oh my God, the hours of that. That is so funny. So I have to bring this up. Like um, years ago, this agent came to me and she was in a new market. Like she transitioned into a new market and she was like, had a whole lot of anxiety about it. I mean, as you, you know, anytime you move from one market that you're own and you're very successful and you go to another one, um, it's, super scary. Um, I've done it. So I have mad respect for people who do it. Um, (laughs) and I didn't want to be, um, really ugly and call this out, but dang it, my nature, which we're going to dig into what that nature is. is like, right. Part of it's being a challenger. You've got that too. Um, uh, and you know, there's so many different profiles too, that we'll go over, but you know, she was like, I don't know why I'm not making the the, the wheels turn. And I, all I could think of in my head was like, it's probably because you farm in that farm. Oh, oh like the farmland or something yeah. like that? Oh, yeah. And, the wordle. It's something, some update, update us on your farm today. <laughs> I all I checked her social media and yeah. she had been taking really good care of that farm. Yeah. It's like closing <laughs> and then uh, new vegetable grown, new yeah. uh, new livestock added. Yeah. yeah. And what's and what's the other um, candy? Candy Crush. Oh yeah, Candy Crush. A yeah. lot of that going on too. Yeah. On My her mom profile. crushed a lot of Candy Crush too. <laughs> Y'all, and this is not to be negative about it, but if you're trying to do something really big, you have to have a big push of productivity behind it. And so I was like, you know, seek first to understand, listening, listening, listening. And Mm. then I'm like, "Mm." yeah, you know, then have to go back and say, all right, you know what? Love this person, love this challenge. How can um, I one not insult them and at the same time get them away from doing, you know, non productive act- activity? So um, let's dive into like what makes us tick. Like, where do we even start? There are a million profiles out there that you can take, and you know, we. <laughs> We've taken our fair share. Yeah, there's at least five that you've got written down. I'm sure there's more, but we've covered the gamut pretty good. All right. So you know my go-to, right? I absolutely love the disc test because pretty mm-hmm. much, I guess, I learned so much about it. Like I can usually have a conversation with someone and like pick it up really good. But it is kind of surface level stuff. It's not really going super deep on anybody. Um, it all it also helps you relate to your clients. Like you can pretty much figure out like how people process information um, just by some of with their mannerisms, some with the questions that they ask, but mostly with the answers that they give you on the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I first started working for you, you, you made me do the disc test mm-hmm. and then we kind of compared all our coworkers and I thought it was really helpful. And I thought it was really interesting is that it kind of separates you in a work environment and you in a personal or like your, your off time, your logged off time. And I thought right. that was really interesting. The difference is there. Yeah. Cause you have your natural, right. Uh, what, you know, the way that you function on a daily basis and your yeah. 
true authentic self. And a lot of times when we go to work, we're not usually 100% authentic because we usually have to make ourselves do the, mm -hmm. the grind work or the crap work or, you know, not, not every day when you're employed by someone, um, real estate agents are the same way we're employed by our clients. Yeah. Um, we don't get to live in La La Land and do all the things we love all day. True. <laughs> so we are going to have that authentic and then we're going to have our prof professional, um, uh, uh, characteristics, I guess, yeah. would be a better. So, so what, what were your results on the DISC test? So on the DISC test, um, mine have actually been fairly consistent throughout um, my lifetime and throughout my career. And I love that. You yeah. know, when things change, I'm like, what? Now we do want to evolve and grow, but you know, when we're talking about like who we are as people, like how we're made, mm -hmm. um, uh, mine has always been very consistent and it is a DI. So authentically, like my natural self is usually probably a little bit higher I than the D, but, um, uh, and D uh, we've got dominant. Uh -huh. We've got dominant and driver, like, which means driver. Nobody has to tell you what to do. You're just motivated because you're freaking motivated. Like yeah. nobody needs to like say, Hey, if you give a little bit more, yeah. <laughs> you're just like crazy wired that way. Mm -hmm. Um, it's actually a super low part of the population, but these are going to be normally the people who are risk takers. They don't look at the, the, they can't see what's going to go wrong. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. But yeah. it's a, it's action. <laughs> it's all about action. For what better or for worse, done? we're doing. We're going. Yeah. It's do, 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 do. Really not even think about do. Yeah. Just do. Mm -hmm. And then I is your um uh your people, people, you know, we love the people. You're, you know, gotta get out there and meet as many people as as you can and uh have a lot of friends mm -hmm. and you know, you want relationships and fun and interaction and right. you know that's what supercharges you so mostly probably uh, an, an extrovert now you can be an introvert and be high mm -hmm. um but uh it's definitely your your people people gotcha and then what else do we have left so um you've got your s which is your stability or your support person okay. or um it's usually the calm in the storm Mm. Like for me personally, because I'm like 100% both um, D and I, like off the chart, like way up there, there's no, you know, it's not like 71%. It's way up there. I fall in love with S's okay. because they're like, oh yeah, unemotional. They're like, well, we, we're, everybody's good. They don't disrupt the car. Right. They'll be honest, completely honest with you. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're like, okay, I heard that the right way. Yeah. Gosh, I love Soothing. you. Just so enduring. Like yeah. I love S's. They complete me. I have very few of those in my world, but, um, and then you've got your C's that are your compliance people, your analytical people, your detail people, the people that ask a ton of questions that could, <laughs> could be considered my arch enemy sometimes. <laughs> yes. What do you need to know? <laughs> And um, I do know that my profile completely gets on the nerves of a high C and same with a high C <laughs> being on the nerves of uh, a, a DI or an ID because, and my husband is this, you know that. Mm -hmm. So my husband is super high C. He's a CD and, you know, I'm a DI. So we're like this all the time. We both have to be dominant. We both have to be right. <laughs> But he's the actually more right person than I am because he has answered all those questions and taken a process to to really get down to, OK, this is viable. Yeah. Now, let's go. Right. Yeah. Then he kicks the D in and it's done and it's like better than good. And I'm like, forget all those details. Why do you need to know all that? Just do. Right. <laughs> Well, he's also he's also the uh, what's known as a craftsman yes. and other. So if he's the that's one right. that's going to be building the things, he needs to know the materials he needs. He know, he needs to know what we're building, why we're building it. And you're just thinking, let's get this thing in the air and we'll figure it uh, out later. That's right. Yes. 
So it, it takes all kinds, mm -hmm. right? And so you have a lot of his skills where, or traits, not, these aren't skills, right? Your skills are going to be separate and different, but this is actually kind of how you process information, how you bring it to the table. So Zach and I actually work really well together because he's not afraid to call me out on my shit. Like he'll be like, okay, that's an idea. <laughs> Let's break it down. Yeah. Let's answer these questions. And I'm like, what? I never even thought about that. And he's like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good because you have such good ideas, but you have so many ideas. Y'all, it's just impossible living here for a minute. <laughs> yeah. But it is a good balance. It is. It is a good balance. And, uh, you know, as we dig into some other profiles, you have wisdom. And I know that and respect that. So, part of the reason, like you said, I got, had everybody like fill everything out and, mm. because it's, it's really good to know where someone's coming from. Yeah. Um, like I know you have anxiety until you can answer several questions of figuring out the why behind something, not the, I'm not going to go do, you're not in your authentic self. You're not going to go do something, put your name on it, put energy, effort, time in it. Mm -hmm. If you don't think it's going to be worth it. Yes. Yeah. I was having a conversation with one of our agents today. That's a lot like that, that will sooner not do anything than do something if it's not a completed idea or, or just, or stay in one place rather than make a mistake, trying something new is we have to have all the, okay, step-by-step, step, what's this going to look like? What are the contingency plans if, and when things go wrong? And once we have those things in place, then it's like, all right, let's move. Um, which is just like Jay, you're right. But you know, we contingency plan. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what you don't think about. And that's why when things go wrong, we have plans for it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Rather than just busting through the door like the Kool-Aid guy. <laughs> oh yeah. But but we need people like you to drive us and get up get us off of our ass to try something new. Well, I mean, we all work well together. So the a million ideas a minute, mm -hmm. it's a really hard. But a lot of that too becomes, okay, where's it coming from? Because I've always felt like my creative brain or anything that pops in my head is not from me anyway. It comes from God. And so should I listen to that and explore each one of it? But you can't, if you don't have people around you that can actually go, oh yeah, no, that was just crap you heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so good. We've got for the disc test, Jenny uh -huh. is a high D, uh -huh. very high energy, very uh, taking action. I'm pretty high C, which is conscientiousness, I think. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, very by the rules, integrity, like let's make everything we do count. Um, but, you know, we've got some challenges that we both have to overcome. And so if that is you, um, there's some insight into the DISC test. So what do we have next? Um, well, one thing, too, I want to say that as far as real estate is concerned, a lot of your team leaders are going to be high Ds. Um, what's weird, like there's only 5% of the population that are high Ds. And so a lot of people will see themselves as Ds until they actually take the test. I don't really know why um, people want to be a D, because if you are just D, you're probably not the nicest person um, because you don't have time for people's feelings or bullcrap. You don't really care to hear their sob story. You're going to cut them off like... Like you're not going to win a whole lot of friends and influence people um, if you are 100 percent D because you don't have time for it. Um, and some of our agents are high, just only high D's and <laughs> I love them. But, you know, when you're a high D, you lead with anger. And so you've seen me do this. Like I will I'm like a super Pollyanna, like very positive person. But I still lead with anger because my D is a little bit higher than my I. So I'll be like. Right. Like that action is just because I'm mad at something. And then I'm like, yes. <laughs> so but if you don't have the I to soften it or the S to soften it or the C to make reason behind, like people go, wow, you were just so freaking smart because that C is that, you know, the smart part, um, then you're probably going to be a jerk. Same thing with I. Like if you were just 100 percent interpersonal, all people, you're never going to get crap done. So this is why it all kind of works together. So 75% of the population are ISCs combined. So where you lead with your I, but your S and your C are um, over the midline um, and all working together. These are your best buyer's agents. Mm. So um, because they can have that interpersonal connection, 
connection, but not too much, right? Um, they're still compliant, so you can trust them with following your rules and your systems and um, that they're going to do the right thing. They're not going to get you in trouble. And that S being unemotional so that they can li really listen to mm -hmm. other people. Gotcha. So um, I just kind of wanted to put that out there as far as if you're building a team or trying to understand. And uh, here's another trap that you can get into. If you are a high I personality, that means you are going to want to work with other people because you love everybody. <laughs> you just can't help it. You probably uh, trash talk them too behind their back. But uh, you are going to want to, oh my God, let's team up and be partners and go on every appointment together and spend every showing together. <laughs> Y'all, I'm just telling you this up front, it does not work. Um, so I'm going to save you a lot of heartache, a lot of wasted time on branding and commingling the funds and going down that route. It just never works. The only time I ever see partnerships work are if they are at exact opposites like marriages. So, um, uh, and I'll tell you, if one of you is ID and the other one is nothing but I, then the D is going to do all of the work and absolutely hate your guts within about two months. <laughs> Wow. So avoid those. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and take the the um, you can take the test on Tony Robbins and um, uh, for free. You'll get a ton of emails and some phone calls after that. But who cares? It's free. Um, yeah. And then figure out who you are and make sure you know who you're business with and where their profiles are so you can move forward. So um, let's talk about a different one. You want to do what's the one we just did? I just I just was made to do one. This. Okay. So the one that we just did today, I did mine what day before yesterday, maybe yesterday. Yeah. I did mine yesterday. So is our spiritual gift. So my pastor gave it to me and I took one like a long time ago when I was a baby in my spirit, <laughs> when I was just like, what's this church thing? Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be about church, but it's your spiritual gifts and like pretty much like what God gave you as far as you to stand out for you to change and make an impact on, um, you know, within the kingdom or within your life. And t let's start with yours. And where did you end up? Uh, I think I end up with administration, leadership and wisdom. Okay. So the C, right? Yep. Um, actually translated well. So we well. fit pretty well mm -hmm. with the disc test and, and this one. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, on, you know, mine ended up being, um, uh, <laughs> you got a crazy life, I know, right. <laughs> I probably should just throw that one out. We should probably just throw that one out. Mitchell bought that years ago. And, uh, I think it's actually been doing that for a long time. So mine on the spiritual, um, uh, gifts, uh, profile were, um, leadership, hospitality and um, mercy. So that people person part like really came in with that mercy, but y'all the D and the doing and the doer and the vision part, um, it got even stronger. It was a perfect score for leadership. So um, I might want to sit on the back row sometimes. I might not want to get involved, but God wired me to stand up <laughs> and take action. <laughs> So did you find, you know, um, as you were taking that spiritual leader, uh, I mean, the spiritual gifts yeah. one? I feel like probably three or four years ago before I started selling real estate full time, that might have looked different. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think mine has changed quite a bit, just being more more extroverted than I naturally am. So I was a bit surprised. And I, I think three or four years ago, it probably would have been different, which leads me into a good question, which is. Do you think tigers can change their stripes? Like, do you think people can adapt their personalities to fit what's necessary to be successful in real estate? Yeah, I think that's a good question. So the disc test for me has been pretty consistent um, throughout. Now, um, the one thing that has changed on my disc test throughout the years is I fake my S so hard. So you will see... <laughs> You will see. Uh, in years past, I was trying so hard to nurture mm -hmm. and I am a caretaker and I want to take care of everybody and I love everybody, but it really drags me down, it does not give me energy. Mm -hmm. um, and I had one of my coaches years ago say, 
all right, the difference in your um, authentic Mm -hmm. and your, your work profiles or your S like you are like pumping that S up so high when you go to work every day, you are making yourself nurture yeah, and you're going to burn out so hard. Hmm. And I have definitely gone through um, burnout spills where I'm just like, oh my God, I just need to go in a hole, which is not me because I'm such an extrovert, right? So I think that's a good question. Have I seen people like swap throughout the years? Or at least just manage it better or or understand that because when you felt burnt out, Uh that should be a signal to you that this is not the thing that I'm the best at. So I should maybe automate that or I should hire someone to take care of that. Is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah. And I actually moved into those steps of finding someone who is like the best nurturer ever to kind of take care of people so that I can have the vision of taking care of people and putting those systems in place. And like, what's the next thing that I feel like people need to, to go into and and focus on the bigger ideas. Um, But uh, it is interesting. I have seen a few people flip flop Mm -hmm. throughout the years, but that's rare. Yeah. It is rare. They'll you, you're push just, their feet yeah. down. Or. So you, you've helped people just adapt their strategies to fit whatever their personality is. Like mm-hmm. I know you did that with uh, a local team that was heavy on the buy side and wanted to be on the list side because the team leader for that team mm-hmm. was not a super rah-rah, care, conscientious person. He just He really wanted to just take care of listings, tick the boxes. Of course, help at a high level, right? But he's not that you know, in that high eye that you. Yeah, would say. he hates people, and that's okay. Um, my husband's like that, you know. People just are not the first thing that they think about in their world. And yes, he wanted to serve people, but he wanted to get out, you know, quickly. Yeah, <clears throat> eyes wanted to stay there and just hold your hand while they're healthy. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> and that's okay. So yeah. He was working with buyers every day. What do you have to do when you're working with buyers? And he was frustrated. He couldn't work another hour in a week. And just everything on his face was like, get me out of this hell hole. Mm-hmm. And of course, he looked at me in true high C fashion, like, what could you do to help me? And I get that. I totally felt him and, and, and understood and wanted to take his pain away. And we did and completely transformed his life in about 12 months um, to fit his own personality. Today, he only works about seven to 10 hours a week in his business. Um, he is exactly where he needs to be. Um, but it comes from understanding like who you are. Um, at the same time, Zach, we may meet an agent that um, is super high and like, hey, don't try to have like super high goals, like bring your goals back so you can like enjoy every step of the process with people Hmm. in the trenches with them, loving on them every step of the way. And they're probably going to be a lot happier. Yeah. Yeah. I was listening to um, a pretty prominent agent on social media recently that was, I think, putting a message out there that it's okay to kind of pull back on the quality of your customer service so that you can go and get future business and put more of your focus on that because what's going to happen in the deal is going to happen on the deal. And I feel like depending on who you talk to, you could get some pushback on that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, absolutely. So one of our agents who um, I adore, I trained her in her business and she was so good. So good. Um, and we tag team for years. She would she took care of my sphere of influence for many years. Um, so she likes to say, This is my limit. I'm not gonna ever go over this amount of listings or this amount of buyers at one time because she knows herself and she's a high eye, and she is just not going to put her current clients in a mm-hmm. position where she's not serving at her highest level or where she feels she served. The client probably wouldn't know the difference. She does. Yeah. So I actually love that. And you know what? You can use that as an offer in your business. Like um, I, I met a lady at a conference one time where she says, I know that 11 is my maximum threshold. I cannot handle more than 11 clients at one time. So I can't take you on as a client right now. But if you want to be on my waiting list, yeah, you know, who doesn't want to be on a waiting list? It's interesting. Yeah. For the best of the best. Right. Right. So um, I just feel like you can use your personality to kind of really work and, and stand out in your business. Um, so those are fun things. So the, the spiritual um, 
uh, gifts thing. I think it's just a great because it's a little bit different perspective. And there are a lot more different traits that you can be on that. Mm -hmm. Um, And it could be something that's totally different. Like, you know, prophecy was one of yours and, you know, like kind of high. And you were like, well, what's prophecy? I mean, my husband's is helps. And I'm like, well, what's helps? Because I was zero on that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And that really means like, um, because Jay shares, you know, the wisdom with you and the admin with you. And that means getting in there and helping no matter what, like he sees what needs to be done and he digs in. I see the vision of where we're going, right. like not right. I don't see that the floor needs to be cleaned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's interesting just to see that there are different categories with that. And they're all fun. Every All of these are just like super fun. Um, but it, it really is goes back to like, how are we going to use it as we discover who we are? Right. So what's the next one? Uh, I believe we've got the Enneagram. Okay. Uh, I think um, one, eight, and three, the high one, which I've seen is called the perfectionist, which you know me, if any of you guys know me, that's pretty true. Mm -hmm. Um, My dad was an editor of my hometown newspaper. So perfection comes pretty big for us just from proofreading and again, wanting things to just be perfect before I get it out. Um, and I've over the years tried to learn that, you know, done is actually better than perfect in a lot of cases, especially if you're somebody like a single agent. Um, but just getting the product out there and fixing it on the back end is OK. Nobody's going to think that you suck or anything like that mm-hmm. because I suffered from anxiety with something wasn't exactly the way I wanted it. Uh, and so I've had to overcome that challenge. Well, so you have super high standards. And uh, that will cease productivity. Yes. Because you know what it looks like in your head. And when it's not quite getting there, nobody else knows that standard. So we're not going to hold you to that standard. Now, Mm -hmm. here's the thing that I feel like everyone who does know you in your world knows that if you're going to put something out, it's going to be good. So they do know that because of your high standards. And I love that you have high standards. Jay has high standards. I don't even know how the hell he married me. but (laughs) um, And you know what? High standard people around you will actually push you to do better. You will start asking questions. I know they're going to ask me this and they're going to ask me that and they're going to ask me this. You Mm -hmm. might start thinking about the details a little bit more than you normally would. (laughs) But I feel like you become trustworthy because of that higher standard. Yeah. Well, I mean, at some point, every agent's going to have to get over it because if you're new, you're going to make mistakes. You're not going to know all the answers. Uh, and maybe you have been in the business for a while, but you're looking to scale or you're looking to work a different segment of the market. And you know better than anybody how to teach agents. Just go in there. Just go and do it. What was your dad? What did your dad tell you when you first started selling real estate? Just get out there, baby. Just get out there. <laughs> figure it out. So Got to yeah. get out there. And, and what were your results? Mine, mine, and I've got it pulled up, like, if we want to, oh, no, I don't. That's on my other computer. (laughs) Let me pull a seven up so we have a cool word. I'm sure there's some kind of word associated with it. Yeah. The the enthusiast. Yeah, the enthusiast. So seven, two, eight is mine. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the enthusiast and... The, the type seven enthusiast is relentlessly curious and optimistic, eager to get the most out of life. Sevens do their best to avoid negativity, focusing their energy on finding pleasure and excitement. Sevens get along well with others at work and at home because they are highly productive, non-judgmental, and have an infectious positive energy. <laughs> I would say other than leading by anger, that's pretty spot yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, but you just said you lead by anger. So we'll we'll just make a small edit there. But you're always on the go. You have a wide range of interest, a childlike enthusiasm and energy, curious, sparkling eyes. How did they know? And they're red. Many ongoing professional and creative projects, upbeat and optimistic, well liked and popular among peers. I think that is pretty much Jenny Williams in a nutshell. <laughs> Have you always been that way? Uh, you mean optimistic? Just like high energy, optimistic, driving, yes. goal oriented. Yeah. Jay has like the perfect impression of me going down the halls in high school. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Yep. I could see that. <laughs> Mostly though, I would wear um, 
I was a bat girl for the baseball team, so I like wore my uh, Russell mm-hmm. wear, um, you know, PHS uh, uh, baseball jo- uh, jogger suit like every day. <laughs> And a ponytail. Yeah. But he said the way that I walked, my ponytail would do this. And I would be like, oh, hey, I wrote you this note. Hey, here's your note. Here's your note. Here's your note. Because I was loving on everybody and yeah. all the time. Yes, it's terrible. Um, my friend Micah, who we've been really good friends since second grade. Mm-hmm. She, Anytime I see her today, she's like, hey, remember that time? <laughs> It makes me laugh because it's so embarrassing. Remember that time when you said, what would be a great idea? Let's write down all the people that we know. Oh, my Lord. (laughs) And I was making databases. As as a youth? Wow. (laughs) When I was in like elementary school. Is that not hilarious? That is hilarious. And we got to twist arms to get people to make databases now, (laughs) real estate agents, so they can get paid. Oh God, that's so funny. crazy! I know it's ridiculous, it's embarrassing. Well, let me let me interrupt you because we're just talking about your childhood. So your dad, Charlie Green, mm-hmm. uh, was and still is a broker. Mm-hmm. And so, what did was there any effect on your personality of having a dad that was like a very successful broker? Do you think that had any effect on your personality? Um, is he similar to you? So I'm very similar to him in that um, he's probably more of a people person than I am. Mm -hmm. Um, He's an entertainer. He is the life of the party, no matter what. He emcees a lot of balls and parties and um, he, because, and he, if you have a roast, you want to invite dad to it because (laughs) He's he's so funny on the spot. He can tell a joke. So while I'm really not funny, I only laugh at my own jokes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so, yeah, I'm very much like him, but I did not want to be a real estate agent. That was the one thing I did not <laughs> want to yeah. do because of because of, of what I saw um, him go through. He was gone all the time mm-hmm. and uh, worked crazy hours and hard to get in touch with because we didn't have cell phones. Oh uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, well, that's funny that, that, that this is the way things ended up and mm-hmm. you actually didn't out of, out of college go straight into real estate. Right. But you ultimately came back to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, did you want to do things differently than your dad? Yeah. Um, so really what takes you away more than anything, like having to be gone all the time or showing houses and working with fire. So I actually got motivated to, um, really just define and put boundaries and systems in my fire business. And I was super proud of that because, um, I'm so rebellious that I was trying to prove to him every single day that I could make six figures working with buyers and that I was going to work that out and I'm just going to prove it to him because he was like, list to last, list to last. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, even though I was like super dialed in um, on the, my my buyer process, um, he was right. <laughs> yeah. Well, dads are like that. I know. I know. It's funny. Uh, I mean, you know, we... Talking about personality tests, obviously your childhood has mm-hmm. such an influence on it. I, I want to talk about, you know, the people that come from different businesses into real estate. Let's talk about some of those people and what are their personality types and how can they kind of use that in the business? I think of teachers, nurses mm-hmm. are people that they're very caring, um, very people oriented so if you're when you're taking these personality tests, like somebody like a teacher or a nurse, like they're gonna get those probably high C and high I. Uh, S. And S. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, you know, those personality types can be very successful in real estate because you yeah. do care. And you're right, like going a buyer's agent route could probably help you a lot with your personality being that way. Yeah. No, I agree. I think teachers especially will Mostly. Now I've got a, a, you know, I'm thinking of like Layton in my head, you know, she, obviously she's D Mm -hmm. and um, she was a teacher. So when I met her as a teacher, right, because Mm -hmm. I was coaching her mom in the business, um, uh, you know, immediately I'm going to assume that she's an S. Right. And she wasn't really dialed in yet on helping. So she was doing some background work 
for her mom mm-hmm. for a little bit. And, uh, you know, I got to see how she worked. She had pretty high standards. And um, then when she came out of the gate, bam, when she, when it was time to take it seriously, mm-hmm. she came on strong. And when I mean, what I mean is that it was all do, do, do. And uh, because she took a different role on. Right. Right. It wasn't teaching. It wasn't helping mom in the background. It was, okay, this is my business. I'm ready. I'm taking it seriously. And I really felt like that D was there. But most of the time, uh, teachers are going to translate very easily into being a really good buyer's agent. Right. And what are what are some other careers that we've had people come from? Obviously, selling sales and just different industry. Mm-hmm. Those people are typically high D. Um, depending, um, Mm -hmm. like pharmaceutical sales or, um, you know, one of our highly successful clients, um, uh, was pharmaceutical sales for years. And I mean, she just owns her market. She's just so good at it, but she learned those sales traits and how to close and, and, you know, how to set the close up and all of that good stuff, um, you know, in her pharmaceutical career. We've got another one that sold pharmaceuticals that works two states. Um, he is amazing, but he is very disciplined from his early years as well, um, being a football player, then selling pharmaceuticals and just being a freaking such a likable guy. Yeah. Um, so what's interesting that you say, you know, when you talk about people coming in from other industries, this is the number one choice for a second career. Um, like it's so easy, right? True. Yeah. <laughs> I just, absolutely. I'm retired from XYZ. I'll just go into real estate. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel about that? Because you came in young in the business. Um, it wasn't, it, it was a new career. Mm-hmm. Um, of course it got, you kind of got blindsided by it, but, um, you know, how does that make you feel when people are choosing this as second go around? Mm, I mean, I wish them all the best. You know, I really do. I don't think there's a one size fits all method to being successful in this. And that is really a testament to all the people that we're surrounded by that do the business in so many different ways. Because, you know, early on when I started selling on my own, I was very intimidated by what I didn't know. And I told you several times that, you know, I, I didn't necessarily feel like an imposter. I think that's a popular phrase that's going around imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. I think I was I was OK that I didn't know all the answers because I felt a tremendous amount of support around me. And so depending on what your personality type is, as you're in the business, you need to have support and you need to have people around you because I knew that I had Jenny Williams I could call and say, Hey, what do I do about this inspection report? Can you show it to Jay? Like, I don't know. I don't even know what this thing is or, or just things like that. And that saved me from making a lot of mistakes. Uh, so I was very grateful for that. So yeah, I wish everybody the best. I don't, I don't think there's a personality type that means you're going to be bad in the business. There's so many different ways Mm -hmm. to be successful in it. We're uh, really fortunate, I think, to be selling in the era that we're in because if I were to come in this 15 years ago, that may be a different story. Yeah, that's true, because you could actually focus more on using your skill set, like your digital marketing and content marketing. And um, <laughs> when I uh, first met Zach, he was like, oh, God, I hate Facebook. He and he was I didn't like, even have it for like three years. <laughs> it was awesome. He was like, I had to delete some more people. I got to 100. And <laughs> Yeah. It was so funny. And I'm like, oh, you're going to have that to get changed. a lot more friends. And then he would go, why are all of your agent clients asking to be friends with me? I'm like, because they're interpersonal people and yes. they just want to know who you are as a person. Yeah. And turns out that most of them are the best people that mm-hmm. I've ever met. So, right. They're just curious. They want to know you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, that's interesting that you brought up the marketing because we did do a I, we did do a class today mm-hmm. on uh, the five different types, the five types of real estate marketers. And so I love that we're talking about the personality test because that's like perfect for you to kind of get a broad idea of what comes natural to you, like you say, and the way you are in a work environment. And then okay, let's let's figure out how we're going to execute. And I think the five types of real estate marketers is a really great way to get a picture and an idea of in your head of, okay, how am I going to get my message out there? Uh, what medium, what media am I going to use? So we talked today about 
the five different types, and those are digital marketers, uh, content marketers, relationship marketers, which is most agents, relationship mm -hmm. marketers, and then there's traditional marketers and direct marketers. And so as you may want to write those down, if you kind of like look at your disk test or something like that, you can figure out. Okay, so my relationship marketers are likely going to be my high I people, very interpersonal. Um, your direct marketers, that'd be something where you're actually calling people, cold calling or um, door knocking, stuff like that, like going directly to the customer. Probably going to be high D for that. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, traditional marketing has a lot of different facets, content marketing, I'm a content marketer and so I'm a high C. So maybe that that's the correlation there. Um, and your digital marketing is going to be more where you're focused on lead generation, funnel based sales. Like there's a process to this. There's a campaign, a beginning and an end. And at the end of it, I've got something like lead generate, like lead information that I can call these people. So I love that we name those and depending on your personality type, there, here are the options for you. Again, like I've, I've told you any million times, what people love about her is that she give this buffet of options and information for people to take and use in their business. So I think that's a great way to do it. Well, not everybody, you're not going to feel comfortable doing what I do in my business um, because your personality may be different. Um, and if you're not comfortable with doing something, then don't do it. Um, instead of spending, you know, all of your time working yourself up to do that one thing, figure out something else that's going to work so that you're actually not having the ramp up time and you're having the productivity time. Like if I told you you had to do circle prospecting or making cold calls, I mean, most of you would completely freak out. There are so many books about call reluctance and it has a name for a reason because people's heart just start racing and they start thinking of all the negative things that somebody's going to say to them. And really they probably won't even answer the dang phone, <laughs> but they work themselves up for 30 minutes to make one phone call and you cannot be productive to do that. So like, if that's you just, instead of, you know, focusing on either getting better by going to classes on that. And I think like Alex Acuff, one of our agents mm -hmm. at Auburn, he, um, he is so good at that. Like that's one of his really good things because he's mastered it. He's mastered scripts and he's tested it and he records himself. So he tries to get better about it. You have to be committed, um, uh, you know, to learn that and be good at that. If not, it's your personality. Otherwise go and do things that make your phone ring in the way that make you feel comfortable. So um, I just think that, you know, Zach put those, uh, uh, quizzes together for you to be able to like cut through the crap and get straight straight to all right like what will you do like um I am very relationship marketing but when I moved here I didn't have relationships with anybody I didn't know anybody so like throw that out the window like I can't like like there is nobody right I have to so I learned how to do direct response marketing which is a form of direct marketing but it's marketing that gets your phone to ring back to you with something of value some reason giving them a reason to call and uh, I studied it I went to conferences um I you know practiced and implemented different things until I found what worked and when I got it to about 11 million in sales um for the year I started um, having relationships that I could turn into referral partners and uh, then being my authentic self by mm -hmm. building on that. And y'all, that's highly rewarding to me. Um, so really take Zach's quiz. Um, where, where can they find it? Just go to the Get a Real Estate Life YouTube channel and you're going to see the video. I don't have a URL for it. We should definitely get a URL for it. Or I may, I don't know. I, it, we might. Five we just types of something. We just actually um, swapped everything over to a new platform, and uh, you can definitely go to our YouTube channel, and you'll see um, videos about the personality types. But I will for sure. We can put the link in there. Put a link somewhere. Somewhere there'll be a link. Yeah, yeah. We'll put a link here and then on there too. So um, I'm pretty sure she's got that set up. Yep. Us. So, um, all right. So really, uh, uh, some of the other ones that we've taken, I think are 
fun, like Strength Finders. Strength Finders um, 2.0 is a little bitty book and you can read it, take the assessment. And uh, again, they're always fun. And normally when you do leadership retreats or conferences, a lot of times they'll pass out, what are you today uh-huh. <laughs> on this assessment? And achieving was one of mine. Like mm-hmm. you have to achieve every single day, even when you're on vacation or you won't be able to relax and have a good time. So one of the things that you said earlier with one of mine was that live life to the fullest, like get the most out of it and always looking for the next exciting thing. And I am, but I can't get there until I've actually achieved something. Yeah. Whether it is writing a book or taking care of a couple of people or getting something under contract. And then I can go and do that big, exciting thing that I was searching for. Okay. So they kind of all go together. So those are fun. I think there are five different types um, that you will um, on your strength finders and um, be able to, to find. But I remember achievement was my number one. Um, another one that um, I took, I don't think you took this one, but um, it's called the Kobe test. And um, it, uh, it's pretty much for entrepreneurs or who want to start their own business like um, the, the thing that stands out to me more than anything is the quick start. And, um, the guy who actually gave us the test, his name is Cord Sachs and, uh, um, Fire Seeds. Um, yeah, they do like Chick-fil-A's hiring yes. and culture. They're yeah, big deal. They're amazing. He's amazing. Um, just how he even like runs his family with all of his children. I mean, it's just amazing. Um, he said that, uh, I had scored the highest on quick start that he had ever seen. And what that means is getting an idea and running with it. Just like, I mean, it popped in the head and just having it developed and selling the first thing by the end of the day. Right. But then, you know, quick starts are usually quick to fade as well. So um, that idea, idea, once it gets momentum, which it's got to have momentum quickly for me, then it's got to go somewhere else um, to keep it going. And uh, I've learned that about myself. But what was funny is he told me that it was the highest he'd ever seen. And then he shook his head. (laughs) And then he went over to Zach and said, man, it must be so hard. (laughs) Working working for her. Yeah. So I love that. I've always um, felt like I'm such a problem. So uh, did we go? Oh, oh, um, the working genius. Okay. Oh, yeah. So my pastor is also a business consultant. And um, so he likes to sit around and we talk about, you know, different ideas and how we can work better, um, especially because we've got this family business, right, of investing and flipping and building and, you know, taking care of real estate agents and training real estate agents and all that good stuff. Like our world is real estate. Everything that revolves around us is everything real estate. And he wanted us to take this um, uh, uh, working genius test. And so Zach took it too. And Zach, tell everybody what you are. Um, for that one, the options for the working genius are uh, spells the word widget. And that is wonder, invention, discernment, galvanizing, enablement, and tenacity. Uh, my working genius was tenacity and discer- discernment, tenacity and discernment. Right. Which I think are super important. So he can call the bull, right? But he's going to get stuff, stuff done. If he buys into it and sees that it's viable, then it's going to be done by tomorrow. Like all of energy, it's going to have the high standards. And um, this is why everybody goes out of their way to say, do you think Zach would be interested in X, Y, Z? Because I'm around a ton of idea people. I even had somebody else say that to me today that's not in real estate world. Um, So he can be sought after because he has that tenacity um, and uh, and, and does take an idea and a vision and uh, make it come to life. Um, I think I'm a lot sort of like you in that regard and achieving. You want to get something done. I I enjoy getting something done. Yeah, you do. And putting a bow on it. Yes. And, and like, then moving on. Yes. And go, dang it, I've got something to show for my time. Exactly. Now I can kick back and yeah. feel, okay, I'm, I've accomplished you can something. You have today. that bottle of wine. You can have. <laughs> yes, exactly. Beer, beer and then, for me. Yeah. And then we can talk shit about that later. <laughs> yes, absolutely. A 30 that's, minute call. That's the best day. <laughs> um, 
So mine was, um, and I'm totally predictable, like so predictable. Uh, mine was galvanizing and invention. <laughs> and the <laughs> first thing I said was, what is galvanizing? Yeah, I'll like, read it off. What is that? So galvanizing generates enthusiasm and action around the idea or solution. Pretty spot on there. What was the other one? Invention? Uh-huh. Uh, invention confirms the importance of that need and generates an idea or solution. So both of these are talking about ideas and solutions being generated and implemented. Yes. <laughs> See the common thread here, but that's so, it's so fun to take all like, the different types right. and see the through lines and actually be able to name it like, Oh, that makes sense. I yes. know I'm this way now. So well, cool. I think that it gives people um, validation yeah. on who they are that mm -hmm. um, it's okay. We, we oftentimes, whenever we take on a role or a task or a job, we start thinking, oh my gosh, that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. Right. I should be, I should be, I should be, I should be a certain way. Mm -hmm. And you were made the way God wanted you to be. And um, like I just said, it seems like I'm always end up being the problem. <laughs> I really do feel that way all the time. Like I'm just too much. Like people can't handle me. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but really I need to embrace and all of these things say that like Zach needs to embrace like who he is and who his gifts are. And um, I need to embrace who I am. But I know that I can't live my life without people like Zach in it, without those other people that are smarter than me, that are going to ask the better questions than me that um, will take an idea and actually make sure that it works. Um, Let me ask you two questions. Uh -huh. Number one, what type of clients do you enjoy working with? What kind of personality types in your clients do you enjoy working with? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I like to work with clients who um, listen. Mm -hmm. So I love C's. Yeah. I love C. I can actually handle C's because I live with them. It's so funny that you say that. I like, I love being questioned when it comes to a client, not from a spouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be learning that soon. Yeah. Well, and I think though, another reason though that I love, so here's the high eye in me. I love um, a high C client is that I just love to win them over. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> because they're like, oh Yeah. Prove it to me. And I'm like, I will. <laughs> how do you, I'm up for I, so it. how do you how do you prove that to someone? It's by knowing your shit, right? I mean it's knowing. Yeah, it's by showing up. Um, it's actually for a C, um, it's providing that security and that confidence that hey, I know what I'm talking about, but they're, I, I can't tell a high C I know what I'm talking about. I have to prove it to them every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Like that education, that whole um, uh, uh, consultation up front, like, hey, these are your loopholes right here. These are problem centers. These are red flags that could happen. Let's avoid these red flags by X, Y, and Z. That's where you really gain the trust with the high C. Not, oh my God, we're going to have so much fun together. Yeah, like, that's gross. They're like, get the hell out of my face. Yeah. Like, show me the money. <laughs> yes. I like that. So I actually love them. The only re like I love high eyes and I want to help high eyes. High eyes are like real estate is so emotional anyway mm -hmm. that they really turn on yeah. the dramatics. And I mean, everything can be completely devastating. Like, hey, you just got a showing within five minutes. <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> They can turn on you in a dime because yeah. they're so emotional mm -hmm. and um, they'll call you later and love you up and take you to dinner and send you three bottles of wine. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so they're going to be fine in the end, but during the process, I think it's a little bit more challenging for me. Right. I what about you? I what, are your, what are your favorites? I think, I think I'm with you on the high eye. The emotions are a bit much for me, but maybe I can, maybe I offset that by, having a, a lack of emotions almost across the board. Yeah. Um, I don't like dominant people when it comes to real estate. Yeah. I've worked actually the, the, like the third transaction that I did was a buyer and the husband was very high D, but I felt it was like unjustifiably high. Um, but at the same time, <clears throat> maybe I'll give him some grace because I was brand new and clearly there were some answers I didn't know, but the high D 
was a lot for me. It's almost like now I'm so much more comfortable in the business. So you know how to handle it Mm -hmm. and just, Hey, let's take the temperature down here. And this is how I work. It's step by step. If something goes wrong, this is what we're going to do. And this is, this is exactly how this is going to look. Right. Um, Which it's been a market that's been, I think a where the deals have been a bit more predictable than now. Yeah. So I'll just have to keep adapting for stuff like that. But I I have confidence that I can deal with the high D now better than I did early on, for sure. So when working with a high D client, um, I love that because that's my language, um, is they don't want to hear all the crap. They don't want to hear how you're going to sell anything. They don't give a rat about your marketing plan. They want to know what was the result that you did the last couple of times. And if you cut through like, Hey, look, I know you don't want to be bothered with all of this nonsense. Mm -hmm. Um, the last three sales, I got my client over asking here, I got, you know, my client here within 20 days and I got my client here. What do you want to accomplish out of your sale? Because they're bottom line thinkers. They want all that fluff to go away. In fact, what makes a high deep really hard to work with is that they would rather someone else like their spouse sit in and listen to all the other stuff and the house tour and everything else. Yeah. Then they come in, they're the real decision maker, but they didn't hear everything else to back it up. Right. And then they think they know better. So True. <laughs> that's probably the harder client to work with with mm-hmm. that, but just cut it down to the end and say, this is going to be the result and then act fast. Yeah. They want to see you acting fast. I love that. Like, got that done. Like, send a text. Hey, got that done. Right. Hey, it's in the, um, your sign's up. Hey, your lot box is out. Photos ordered. Right. They wanted to see that activity is moving along. Good. I love that. I, I like working with decisive people. Even in, especially a market like this where things have slowed down. Hey, just tell me what you want. Dream scenario. What do you want? Let's be decisive on something. Just let me go and get it for you. So now, what type of agents do you love to work with personality types Um, either co-op or just like in our organization uh to mm, i like them all um just because you are who you are so um i actually i mean the only let me just make this even let's just get who do you what kind of agent do you hate co-oping with okay there you go one that absolutely one's condescending and talks down to me Mm -hmm. Um, and two tries to bully you. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that negotiation approach. Yeah. That's not going to win. I had somebody tell me a couple, well, last two years ago, um, someone that I had known forever, always sits on the front row at all of my events and has for over 10 years, always been lovely to me, hugs me for the value that, um, she would get, um, out of every time she came to a class, every other agent said she was just awful to work with. And this is not a code of ethics thing. Um, cause I ain't saying nobody else, but, um, <laughs> uh, ended up bringing me an offer on one of my listings and was so ugly. I don't know what the personality click is like, whatever, make it an offer, but like, and ended up saying, here's the offer. And you better be glad I even wrote it for that high. Those people should be lucky to get it. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that's your, that's what you start with. Yeah. And it was a low ball offer. And God, what would their clients think? <laughs> knowing that that's the way I know I know and so what's funny about my clients who's one of our agents now they were just like you know we're just not really excited about it let's just kind of hold off they weren't not interested in responding at all uh-huh. so they really just kind of ignored it and so that really made her mad so she asked you know and I kept explaining hey I've, I've, I've reached out with them I've met them I have given them a uh, the um the offer i've talked to them over and over about it they're just really not that excited they're really disappointed pretty yeah. much that it was so low that yeah. they're not interested in responding and uh so she ended up telling me for all of the coaching and classes that you've taught throughout the years dealing with you has been highly disappointing <laughs> she did and i said well, I am at least glad that I don't have to impress you at all. I have to impress my clients and do what they say. And we ended up selling it for full price. So, nah! Take that, lady. <laughs> that is the client. <laughs> I'm the meeting the agent I do not want to co-op with. And what's what funny, I was talking to one of my friends um, not long after that, and I was talking about, you know, I never said a name, but I said, 
wow, I mean, these agents that will make you an offer and start bullying you. Right. Like, that is not how to negotiate. Like, uh-uh, be a sweet negotiator. And um, she actually said, you know, so-and-so, this same agent made an offer on one of her listings mm -hmm. and <laughs> told her the same thing. It was so ugly. So it's just her style and how she does. But that's really an example. I took made that into a little story. But um, that's an example of who I don't want to co-op with. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's real simple. If you tell me how long you've been in the business <laughs> and that's how you lead off, I hate you. I know. I know. Plain and simple. <laughs> All you're doing is telling me how long you've been an asshole. I you know. know. I, actually, um, somebody, it's weird though, but everybody wants to kind of like kick yeah. around, sniff each other. Right. You know, I've been in the business 27 <laughs> years. <laughs> I heard a guy that I trained like first year. He's amazing. He just understood it, got it, just has a, a wild successful career he was on the phone one day going oh yeah we've well, been doing it wrong for 30 <laughs> years and i was like oh my god somebody just pulled the 30-year card yeah. on him <laughs> yeah so yeah i know i hate to be that jerk too so well this is fun this was fun and yes we will put links um all around for you to go and and do your personality tests I love doing that. I think it's great for single agents to figure out like, okay, what's my path and how I'm going to execute. If you're a team leader, you have, you should do this before you onboard someone, I think, just so you know what you're getting yourself into and yes. what, and what's best for your team and partnerships. I love that. The part you talked about, if you've got agents that want to partner up and you can't have two of the same personality types, there's got to be some balance. I love that you said that. So yeah. Okay, how do we end this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> well, really, it's just understanding more about who you are as you're growing and evolving and um, as a business person um, and someone who just wants to sell a shit ton of real estate. And I think that was my third time to cuss. Yep. Um, but you know what? That's on my natural, authentic self. <laughs> I love it. You just take action, man. <laughs> That's right. Just be who you are. And we'll leave it to people it. like me to clean it up later. <laughs> No, there will be no editing here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. You know, what's super important to us is having an infinite impact. Yes. See you guys on the next one.